Working from home has recently become the reality for those fortunate enough to be able to work from home, including myself, although I was already doing it three days a week, so it's not really that new to me. But what this is, it's a status indicator that you can attach to your door to tell the people in the house whether it's not okay to come in or if you're on a call or whether it is okay to come in. In this video, we're going to take a look at how I built this project completely from scratch, so I didn't know exactly how I wanted to approach it. So I'm going to go through the different thought processes I had around different things. And seeing as the day the video releases is the 17th of March, or St. Patrick's Day, if you stick around to the end, my daughter is going to teach you a little bit of Irish. Sammy, what's that? That's glass. It's a light, isn't it? Yeah. The first thing I had to decide was what microcontroller to use. I knew I probably wanted to use battery power, so using the Feather series of boards from Adafruit made sense. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to use an A266 version or an ESP32 version. They're the only two versions I have. I decided to use Wi-Fi for this project because it's something I'm very familiar with and this was just a quick one day build. But for battery powered projects, it's not always a good choice because it's not very power efficient. What's good about it though is it does have two-way communication and it's easily accessible from any PC or whatever. And also you might be able to use it to integrate with other things like say for example, maybe it could hook up to your Outlook calendar or something so it automatically sets red if you're in a meeting. The first thing I wanted to set up was my NeoPixels or my WS2812B LEDs. They are the addressable LEDs. So again, these are probably a bad choice for a battery powered project, but if you want to get color changing LEDs and you want to be able to address them, which I don't actually do in this project really, then these are the quickest way of getting up and running as you only need to connect three wires. As you, as you can see here, I'm connecting VCC to three volts, so I don't need to do anything with logic level shifting. The first thing I tried to do was just write a type of a blink sketch for the NeoPixel ring, so I flashed it between red and green every five seconds. I was having an issue with one of the LEDs on startup that it was staying yellow even when I set the colour to be red, but I was able to fix this by adding a delay in between when I began the pixels and when I showed the first one. I then decided it'd be a good idea to test the power draw and I used one of these USB power testers to do it. I don't even know why I did this, I didn't use this for anything. I'm sure if you're familiar with my channel you know that an ESP8266 can host a web server on it and I did that using the example project Hello Server. I modified the project to have different endpoints to set the different colours that I wanted so I created a red one, a green one and an off one. Some of the more eagle-eyed viewers among you might have noticed the URL I was accessing the ESP8266 on. It was wfh.local. The ESP8266 refers to this as MDNS, but it's more commonly known as ZeroConf or Bonjour services. If you've ever set up a Raspberry Pi, you might notice that you can access it using raspberrypi.local rather than just the IP address. So things were going pretty well at this point, but then my wife threw a spanner into the works and said that she wanted to have a button outside the door that could notify me that there was somebody there. This caused me some problems because originally I had planned to put the Arduino inside the door and maybe run the cables for the light through the keyhole or something, and now there would have to be a button there as well. It actually sent me down this rabbit hole of trying something that I wanted to do before but never had the opportunity and that was use the touch of the ESP32. For those who don't know, the ESP32 has some pins that can be used as a capacitive touch sensor which means you can just attach a wire to it and it will detect when something has touched it. I thought it would be really cool if I set up the ESP32 on the inside of the door and added the capacitive touch sensor through the door handle. My initial testing was not good with this. When you saw it earlier, there was a swing of like 70 in between when I touched it and when I didn't. When I was using the door handle, there was a swing of one. But when I posted on Twitter about it, some people gave me some suggestions and I did actually improve it so that there was a swing of about 15. So it would have actually been usable. 
As a side note, John from Espressive contacted me about trying out an ESP32 S2 when that comes out. Apparently it'll have a more sensitive touch sensor, so I obviously said yes, so stay tuned for that. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that that wasn't the Huzzah 32 anymore. This was one of the yaks I had to shave where I found out that my Huzzah 32 would not connect to the Wi-Fi using the latest version of ESP32. It would work with older versions, but not the latest one. I was easily able to test it with older versions using the method I showed in a previous video around portable Arduino IDEs. When testing the ESP32, I noticed the MDNS was nowhere near as reliable as it was on the ESP8266. It failed a lot. Even though this was originally something I hadn't planned to use, I was finding it really useful because I didn't need to know the IP address of the ESP8266, which is a problem when you need to connect to it using a web page. So in the interest of time, I decided to just focus on getting the project finished, and I decided I'd prioritize MDNS over the touch sensor, so that meant I was now going back to the ESP8266. I next decided to focus on how I was going to attach the project to the door, so I thought maybe a big magnet would be able to do it, and old hard drives are a great source of really strong magnets. I recommend being really careful with them because they are really strong and you could easily pinch a finger or something. I decided I'd quickly check whether it was strong enough to be able to hold up the project, so I just attached it to the breadboard. The only problem being I attached it the wrong way around. Thankfully though, when I swapped it the correct way around, it seemed to hold up just fine. It seemed to have plenty of strength to be able to hold this and more. In fact, it worked so well that I decided if I could make it neat enough, I could just put everything outside the door. I then decided to see if it would hold up itself through a plastic box, and it did too, so this gave me the case. Next, I wanted to sort how I was going to power the project. If you're familiar with Big Clive's channel, you might have seen these before. They're a throwaway power bank, which seems incredibly wasteful to me, but there's a LiPo battery inside that we should be able to use. After doing some initial testing to make sure that everything would fit, I decided now would be a good time to solder it up. So after soldering it to a bit of proto board, I then decided to test the battery, something I should have done before, but I haven't used this battery before, so it should be fine, and it's not. I don't actually have a lot of LiPo batteries, so to finish the project, I just took the one from the Bluetooth macro keyboard video from a few weeks ago. I was honestly feeling too lazy to even go find my hot glue gun, so to attach everything into the case, I just actually used Bluetech. A lot of Bluetech. And despite all the extra weight, it held up fine, no problems at all. I was then able to test it using the code I'd written earlier, and everything was working great. The final thing I did with the project was I added a nicer web interface behind it, so rather than entering in the URL you wanted, I added three buttons that could control those URLs. That's as far as I've brought the project so far. It gave me enough of a prototype to test and see how things were. If I was happy with it, then I can move on to maybe designing a proper case for it, one that's enclosed, and maybe getting a proper battery for it, and all that good stuff. But I did actually use it yesterday, and it worked pretty well. Um, battery lasted a good while, I should definitely get a day out of it, and I can just charge it in the evening, and that should be good enough. I did have a couple of thoughts about the project since I had it, and I'll share those with you now. I was thinking if you wanted to build a really simple, non-technical solution, this kid's light that I used in my DIY temperature monitoring build would actually work pretty well. So it comes with a remote, or at least you can get ones that come with a remote, and you could just stick it up on top of your door and just use that as your indicator. Turn it off, comes with a built-in battery, so yeah, a really, really simple version of the build. And also, in that video, I showed you how you could interact with this bunny using an Arduino and an IR sensor. So you could actually still control it using a web page or maybe integrate with other services or whatever. I promise you this is a genuine story, but last night on the top of my recommended pages was the guest video I did for EEV blog. And I decided to look through it because it's been a couple of years and I hadn't seen it in a while. And in that video, I literally make this project, except the interface is Telegram. It wasn't originally for a work from home job, but it was a NeoPixel ring and a button 
and you could change the color of it. So yeah, there is another version of the project and I'll link to the code for that too. Diagwitch a chorja, brian makan luka is anam dum, kunasatatu. So that is Irish. It is not something I can speak very well, despite doing it in school all my life. But my daughter is going to uh, play school that she learns Irish true. So English is the main language in Irish. We are a dual language country officially, but the majority of people can't speak Irish or can speak Irish about as well as I can, which is not very much. But what's really interesting about my daughter's situation is she's only three and uh, like she's already starting to pick things up. I guess they're just a sponge at that age. And she'll automatically kind of interject some Irish into the sentence. And a lot of the times we actually don't know what she's saying or even that she's speaking Irish at all. And here is an example of that now. And Sebi, what's that? That's glass. It's a light, isn't it? Yeah. What colors are they? Jarek. Jarek. And glass. <laughs> glass, is it? Yeah. Oh, what colors are they in English? Um, what color is that in English? It's, it's green, it's green. It's green, and what color is that? A red. Red. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear any feedback you have either in the comments below or if you want to join me and some other really friendly and helpful makers on my Discord, that would be great too. The link is in the description below. Finally, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping support the channel. If you don't know, GitHub are matching sponsorships for the first year that somebody is offering sponsors, so there's still a good six or seven months left of that. So if you'd like to help out, that would be great. That's it from me. Thank you for watching and slong a fall.